Wow, that's a big news day in Ottawa. The Ottawa Senators have fired their general manager, Pierre Dorian, or as they put it, relieved him of his duties. I don't know how relieved he is, actually. And this is on the same day that they will be forced to forfeit a first round pick because of the Evgeny Dodonov trade with the Vegas Golden Knights. Let's try to break this down as well as we can, as quickly as we can. So obviously Dorian let go and it's no coincidence that it happened the same day that the news came down about Dodonov. So let's break that down. The league released this statement. The National Hockey League today announced that the Ottawa Senators will forfeit a first round draft pick for their role in the July 2021 trade of player Evgeny Dodonov from the Senators to the Vegas Golden Knights and the subsequent invalidated March 2022 Dodonov trade between the Golden Knights and the Anaheim Ducks. Ottawa will forfeit its first round pick in one of the 2024, 2025, or 2026 drafts. The determination as to which pick will be forfeited will be made by Ottawa within 24 hours of the conclusion of the draft lottery for that year. The league will have no further comment on the matter. So it's funny, at the time I'm shooting this, the podcast has not gone up yet. I assume it'll be up before this video goes up, but I'm not totally sure. But if you've seen the podcast, you'll know there was a funny exchange between Jesse and I because we kept talking about the trade that got denied between Vegas and Anaheim for Dodonov, but all the problems stem, and we know this now from the statement, from that initial trade in 2021 the Senators giving Dodonov to the Golden Knights in exchange for Nick Holden. The really frustrating part here is the NHL not having any further statement. Like, we're not getting any clarification, so we're going to have to rely on the insiders for that. And, by the way, brand new CJ show tomorrow. But, from that statement, we can deduce, in my opinion, that Vegas wouldn't have made this deal with Ottawa in the first place had they known about Dodonov's full contract situation with the no trade. It would appear that the Vegas Golden Knights were under the impression that Dodonov waived his no move clause to go to Vegas, therefore he had no trade clause anymore and they could just trade him wherever they wanted. That obviously wasn't the case on account of he used his no trade protection to avoid going to Anaheim. As I've talked about on the podcast several times, like this trade is extremely significant for the Vegas Golden Knights. They take on Dodonov, who is the far more expensive player, earning something like four times what Nick Holden's cap hit was in terms of that trade. And there was a draft pick involved as well that the Golden Knights paid, and they're not getting back. One of the things I thought in the Senators' punishment was that Vegas would get something in return. It doesn't appear that that's the case. But Dodonov made way more than Nick Holden and then the Golden Knights had to keep paying him because they weren't able to trade him to Anaheim. They weren't able to get the cap relief there. And in part because of that gong show, you might remember a couple years ago, even though they're Stanley Cup champs now, a couple years ago, Vegas narrowly missed the playoffs. And if I'm Vegas, I'm arguing if we were able to pull this off, we would have had something like a month, month and a half as a better team to try to make the playoffs and do business and then we get home dates in the first round and maybe second and who knows. So again, if I'm the Vegas Golden Knights, I'm arguing that the Ottawa Senators, by not giving us all the information up front, cost us millions and millions of dollars. I'm willing to bet part of the holdup was Vegas wanted draft pick compensation and honestly, I don't know if they're wrong to ask for it. The Senators are purely getting punished, but Vegas gets nothing out of this. I mean, they won the Stanley Cup last year, so maybe they don't mind. From reports that are out there, it sounds like it was just important for Vegas that everyone know, hey, this wasn't us and our reputation for treating players willy-nilly and just getting rid of guys and not caring about them or their families or their feelings. No, this wasn't us. This was Ottawa's negligence under Pierre Dorian, and that leads us to the rest of the news from today. Senators fans know this probably better than anyone in recent memory. This is going to hang over the team for years to come. Years to come. The Duchesne trade and subsequent giving up of the fourth overall pick to the Colorado Avalanche, they get Bowen Byram as a result of you making a terrible trade, that was also Pierre Dorian, 
It helps, though, that the next year the Sens get Brady Kachuk. He goes on to become their captain. And in the Eric Carlson deal with the San Jose Sharks, the Sharks made the exact same deal the Senators did, except worse, they give up the third overall pick and the Sens get Stutzla. So they come out of it. The Sens somehow come out of that Duchesne trade disaster. And actually, they end up looking okay. Like, they're a team that is, they're up, they're down, they're having some bad luck, they're having some other controversies. But... We generally expect them to be pretty good in somewhat short order. But let's say they don't make the playoffs this year. And let's say they get a lottery pick this year. Well, you're not going to give up the draft pick this year. You're not going to forfeit that. No. And they're a move away. They're a move away. We're going to go out and we're going to get someone at this trade deadline and we're going to be fantastic. <gasps> you have no first round pick. Like around the trade deadline, second round picks, teams are trading those around willy nilly. Third round picks you're willing to give up for guys like Dave Riddick, Leafs, huh? But having to forfeit a first round pick when you're a rebuilding team is killer. Having to forfeit a first round pick when you're a team that's going for it is killer. Either way, this move in and of itself is a fireable offense, and that's why Dorian is no longer the GM of the Ottawa Senators. That being said, why did this take so long, man? Like, why did this take so long? Because listen, I'm not an insider. I have, you know, some sources here and there. I'm well connected enough that sometimes I get information. And earlier in the summer, I tweeted that, hey, it looks like the Senators are gonna bring in Steve Steos, and I said at the time, probably as GM. Now, I got parts of that right. Steve Steos did eventually come on board. He's the president, though, and for a very short time was Pierre Dorian's boss. But in the several months between me sending out that tweet and the Senators actually bringing Steos on, like, I started to doubt myself a little bit. Like, there's... Even though I believed in the information, I believed in the source, I'm like, okay, this is taking a while. And of course, Steos comes on board, but Dorian is still there. And I guess what I'm saying is maybe when you get new information, like this ruling, you go, okay, that's new information. This is really bad. You're fired. I guess what I'm saying is I don't believe that this wasn't always going to be the outcome for Pierre Dorian. A little bit of shades of Craig McTavish in there. Just the second things seemed to be improving, you're gone. McTavish, he was the GM of the Oilers. They were so, so, so bad. They win the draft lottery. The year that you had the first overall pick to get McDavid, hey, guess what? You're fired. Pierre Dorian, for years under previous ownership, oh, he's so hamstrung and he doesn't have a big staff and he doesn't have all the resources that other teams have. Oh, it's a new owner, oh, you're fired. As for rumors who will be the next Senator's general manager, there's only rumors. My guess is the Senators would be comfortable with Steve Steos, who was previously an assistant general manager in Edmonton, but he was also basically making all the decision for Michael Ann Lauer's Hamilton teams in the OHL. My guess is that for the time being, Steos will be basically making all the decisions. I don't know if he'll ever give himself the title of GM, but he'll be making all the Senators' decisions until they find the right candidate. The Senators have been adding to their staff quietly. You'd have to be paying attention because it's kind of in between controversies when they announce this stuff. They got Matt Nickel. Hey, that's good news. But new beginnings, and maybe now the Senators can move on because this is a new era new ownership new president everything's new in the beginning of the season so far i guess you could call that growing pain so what do you think of this news what do you think of the punishment from the national hockey league handed down to the ottawa senators and what do you think of this pierre dorian news leave a comment in the comment box down below but for now that is it for this one Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe to SDPN Sports because gosh darn it, this YouTube channel is great. Tell all your friends. We'll be back uh, when uh, something else happens because the NHL just won't stop, apparently. This is a wild beginning to the season for a lot of people.